You got this shit of love, homie? That's how black people be getting ahead. Mm -hmm. Look at Obama. Change. He got to be president, so now the rest of us get to be in prison. I've been in Litchfield for a while now. How's it going, kids? And I have started to feel unsafe lately. You got power now, right? I got a disc. Warden Caputo's office, this is Miss Jefferson speaking. Uh, Jefferson, I got it. My bad, my bad. Hang up the phone. It's our dean time, bitches. We are for-profit prison now. I got a hundred new inmates. I'm dying here. People are always trying to desexualize women my age, and I just won't allow it. Good for you. Send me some goddamn COs now. Walk. <laughs> I'm kind of scared for the new cards. Can you keep a secret? I love secrets. I do not like where this is headed. I'm going to bury you. We're down, we go, go. Everybody getting on each other's nerves. Shit's gonna get stirred. We're down, we go. They could just wipe us out. Boom, boom, boom. You really want to go there with me? I went there, bought a house, moved in, bitch. And now I'm remodeling the kitchen. Baby. I think I pissed off the prison. I will find you! I didn't mean for us to get this bad. Oh, my God! They hate me. I hate them. Our relationship is simple. Do you know the difference between pain and suffering? Pain is always there. Yeah. But suffering is a choice. I'm really tired of walking around like a dog. Crazy is it seeing her without the teardrop? Really? <laughs> and the short hair. <laughs> I gotta wear a wig in season five. <laughs> so uh, I've seen the first six episodes. You saw all the drama already? Oh my God. Oh my God. That is, wow. Litchfield is not in a good place this season. No, we're, we're all in danger. Actually, um, I feel like I only saw that once. It's really amazing. Like, wow, I'm so excited about tonight. <laughs> 12 hours, guys. We get to watch 13 hours. <laughs> I know I'm watching 13 hours. <laughs> so, catch us up. Flaka had, uh, I mean, there was the panty smuggling ring last season. Yeah, and you see what happened with Piper. We'll see what's going to happen this season, right? <laughs> come on, give a little more. Well, you know, I can't. Like, come on, Genji. It's like 12 hours. Keep your mouth shut for 12 more hours. Um... Honestly, this season is just, you know, a lot of new characters, a lot of new people, um, a lot of conflict. The actual prison becomes a character itself. The corruption, um, you get to see all that. Um, we touch on a lot of things that are happening in the world and that need to, you know, start up conversations. And um, I'm really excited to be a part of it. And I get to be... Um, series regular I season mean, four. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Season four. Yeah. That doesn't really mean I'm gonna be in it more or anything. It just means that like, I get two meatballs instead of one. I get more cheese from the cheese plates and I get a ride home. <laughs> no more Subway. <laughs> I still take the Subway. <laughs> but really, I mean, the show does, this season specifically deals with the whole for-profit prison initiative. I don't even know if initiative's the right word, but epi not epi I mean, Trend, yeah. the trend that's yeah. taken over incarceration, right, and what that brings with it, which is a lot of corruption and violence and a disconnect between the inmates and the guards. Yeah, and everything we touch upon is real, mm -hmm. so it, it's happening. Um, they're going to be just ev almost. You're going to see a lot of new faces, and every click has new people and just rivals and um, it's just really good this season. I feel like every season it's, it keeps getting better, but um, this season is gonna be one that you won't forget. 
Now, how do you think Flaca has changed from the first day you played her until the end of season three? I thought I was just a day player. I was like, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> um, I got to fight with like Tasty. Like it was our first scene. Like that's my king cone, you know, whatever. And uh, you can't put this. Can, I can't say that word in here. You can. Oh, I can. You can yeah. Okay. Shit. <laughs> I love that word. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I I thought I was only there for the the day. So I was just happy to be there. But I said, let's do this right, and she kicked my butt, really. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. So I, I used to judge Flaca before. I was like, hmm, she must be bad. She's a chola. Like, who is she? Like, so I learned so much about just Flaca. She's sensitive. She's not what I thought she was. And, um, and I used to judge her before, and now I don't. I don't judge anyone who's in prison because you don't really know why they got there. Um, and the, the system is so corrupt that um, before I used to think they must be bad people, not anymore at all. And she just, I mean, she's not the smartest tool in the shed, <laughs> but, but you know, that also kind of makes her more endearing, I think. Yeah, Plus, I love her uses, musical choices. Uh, she uses it very well. <laughs> she might be smarter than you think, actually. <laughs> I feel like we both have that in common. We play dumb, pretty much, <laughs> to get things. I don't think, really? Do <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, I used to work in nightlife. I'm like, how do you open this bottle? <laughs> I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> Can you do it for me? You know, so, yeah. I had to parallel park a car the other day into a really small spot, and there was like a really hot guy standing there. <laughs> Can you help me? I was like, oh my God. And he totally, he was like, just get out, I'll do it. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, you see? You see? I feel like Flaca has that. She uses what she has and very well. It was my Flocka moment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the car got parked. Awesome. Actually, that's the one good thing. I'm, I, I'm, that's how my mom taught me how to drive. Parallel park first. And then she taught me how to drive. So you can parallel park oh, anywhere. Anywhere. Like the you tightest, can, weirdest spot in New York anywhere. City. Anywhere. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> how has being on the show changed your life? <sighs> well, I'm sitting here talking to you. I mean... Before I was working in nightlife, like I told you, I got fired, actually, because I worked until 6 a.m. and then 6.30 a.m. call time for season one and two. And um, I got fired because I overslept my on-call shift. I'm like, why do I have to call you if you need me? Like, call me. Yeah. So I overslept. And um, they're like, we see that you're not really into your job anymore. I think you're more into Broadway. I'm like, um, my show is on Netflix. <laughs> but I want to be on Broadway. <laughs> so I was, I was like, you know, I was told that I could take this day off for my premiere. And they're like, what's more important, your job or your Broadway show? <laughs> so, yeah, I was fired. You were like, my fictitious Broadway show is more <laughs> yeah, important. Exactly. Yes. Yes. But um, now I get to go and I get a free table at the club. <laughs> And my manager serves me or whatever. But whatever. Whatever. Not a big no, deal. <laughs> it's, all, it's all water under the bar, as it were, right? <laughs> but how did you decide to get into acting? Because I've read your story, and it is fascinating. Thank you. Um, when I was seven years old, I was in the Dominican Republic. My mother took me to the movies to go watch The Bodyguard, right, Whitney Houston. And um, it was dubbed in Spanish, but Whitney obviously sang in English. And um, the moment I saw her... On the screen, her singing, her act, I wanted to be that at seven, I told my mom. So that was it, that was it. I was like, mommy, I wanna, I wanna be an actress. And from then on, she put me in classes, and at 15, we moved from the Dominican Republic, just me and her, to Hollywood. And um, the struggle happened, <laughs> the struggle was real. <laughs> After that, my life was just like, not so good for two years. You've been really open about the car accident yeah, you went how through and how that built your character and made you stronger. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I feel like Hollywood chewed me up and spit me out. I thought it was, you know, wow, this is where your dreams come true or whatever, but you got to come ready. Um, yeah, I was just thrown in with, like, no friends. You know, it's high school. Um, high school's already hard to begin with. Um, so it was just, re I was you know, a little nerd because I played the sax in the jazz band. Um, I was in the marching band. I didn't have many friends. So I met this one girl when I worked in the coat check. I was in like the club since I was 15. So I was working at the coat check. 
And I met this girl and she had her own apartment and um, I didn't like my mother's rules, so I was like a rebel and I moved out at 16. And um, we were on our way to a Wango Tango concert and we were racing some guy um, and she hit the curb and I flew out the window 20 feet away from the car where um, I woke up two weeks later, I had brain surgery, um, 30 staples holding my head together, my whole head was shaved, my eyes were crooked, my um, lung was collapsed. I, I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I had to look like this way because I couldn't see myself and right there my, my life was changed at 17. I was like, all I saw in Hollywood was beautiful people and I never saw anyone that really looked like me anyways growing up. Um, so right there it was already impossible. So right, I, was, I wanted to give up. And then I met this little girl in the rehabilitation center who um, used to come into my room to cheer me up and I never paid attention because I was a teenager and I was like, oh, I wanna kill myself, I wanna die, look at me, I'm ugly. And um, I was like, what is up with this little girl? I, Mom, do you know who she is? And she's like, no. And I stepped up to her, I was like, yo, what's up? She's eight. <laughs> She is also in a wheelchair, she's quadriplegic, and she's like, you had brain surgery too. We had that shaved head thing in common, and she's like, you're really pretty. I tell my mom I wanna be like you. I was like, oh my God, I wanna walk like you. I was like, oh my God. Every time I talk about it, I, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm an actress, I got this. <clears throat> um, so basically, after that, my whole life changed. This little girl saw like a beauty inside of me that I didn't really see in myself. She saw strength and I was like, you know what? She can't walk and she's happy and she's an artist. Like she draws like this and she became a makeup artist. I met her recently after 13 years. She found Stop. me on Instagram and she said, I'm really proud of you. And I was like, and then I showed her my TED talk that I talk about her all the time. And she's like, I didn't know I meant so much to you. <laughs> I was like, girl, you changed my life. So um, I was asked to be in this music video called Sally for BB Borelli. Um, it's about inspirational people. And she's like, is there anyone who inspires you? And I said, Melly Moreno. So we got to be in the music video together. And she did my makeup in there. And um, she's gorgeous, by the way. And um, it was just a beautiful moment. And um, yeah, ever since the day that she told me she thought I was pretty, I was like, all right, you know what? It's not what you look like. It was always what was inside that counted, and she saw that. A little girl saw that, you know? And then I went back to Hollywood with my hospital mullet, because I didn't let anyone touch my hair. I was like, don't touch it, it's growing out. Um, and I took headshots, and no one took me, but they're like, I still kept going. And in 2006, I got my SAC card, and and it was still uh, no work really, so I, uh, music was really my inspiration and I, I kept writing and music took me to Miami and Miami took me to New York and this is where everything really happened for me. Your story is, Jesus Christ, I, uh, come on. Like, I, 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 Thank you. I tell it a million times, but it's, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> But the fact that you chose to share that and you've shared that so many times in interviews says so much about you because you didn't have to. Yeah, I was kind of ashamed by it in a way. Um, I never let anyone see me. I was in the dark. I just, but after um, I, I said my speech, I, told, I talked to some uh, people from the university because I, I do speeches and every single person told me how my story helped them, I was like, okay, I have to, I have to share it. Because it, I'm helping people, and that's the one thing my mother said, you have to make it even more now, because God saved you for a reason, and um, you have to inspire other people, and um, that's why I share it. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you too, back to a little bit to what you were saying earlier, you don't see a lot of people that look like you in Hollywood. It's, I mean, let's face it, there's, it's, it's a pretty one note town. Correct. How how did you find the perseverance to keep auditioning? Well, I gave up for five years. Like I just focused on my music. Um, I have uh, an EP out in 2010, and you know what? I was like, I miss acting. Like it's a little like feeling that I have. I, I should audition again. And it was honestly just random. My my girl in the club. She was like, I have a manager. You should go to her, and she takes 25%. Don't ever do that. That's not good. <laughs> 
And then um, my first audition was for Flaca, and I imagined, I imitated my friend from the club, uh, Karina, if she's watching this, I'm not gonna say her full name. But um, she was really funny, and she had this unique, you know, New York accent, and she was so happy to be working in the club, and she'd get up, and she's like, I'm so excited to be here, I wanna thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> I'm like, girl, we're working in nightlife. This is n not Nuestra Belleza Latina. <laughs> she had like these chandelier earrings. <laughs> I make fun of her, but not, but she laughs with me. We, we laugh together. <laughs> but um, I would like imitate her all day. And then I saw the audition and it said Feisty Latina. And I was like, all right, Karina. <laughs> and I went in there, you know, with my Karina mentality. Um, she would tell me stories how she ended up in jail not knowing how she got there. <laughs> So I just, you know, she'd tell me I'm all these meet stories. This girl. Oh, she's gonna kill me. She used to have, let me tell you, she had a crush on the manager, right? This is funny. And I'm like putting in the computer, like the drinks, and he's talking to me. And she's like, I saw you talking to my man. I was like, I was just asking him how the computer worked. She's like, uh, uh, and she's like, oh, okay, well, did he say anything about me? <laughs> I was like, no, girl. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> She go kill me. I love you, girl. <laughs> but we're still really close. We hang out all, all the time. <laughs> what was your audition like for Flaca? So you walk um, in, you're like, I'm Karina. I got the. Yeah, it was just two lines. Like I told you. Stop. Two lines. Yeah, Flaca worked her way up. <laughs> it was two lines. It was, um, yeah, you can't put your sticky ice cream shit in here. Or whatever. She's like, it's not an ice cream, it's a king cone. I'm gonna fuck you up tonight, Tacey, or some shit like that. I, I think they cut that one out, but I love that one. <laughs> but that was like my audition, that's it. <laughs> and, and when did you find out you got it? Two weeks later, so it was crazy. I thought, you know, it was a good feeling though. I went in there and um, Jen Houston was like, that was good, and I thought she was the assistant because she's so young. I'm like, thanks guys, but I'm the first person you see today or whatever. But yeah, she, she, she liked me, I guess. And um, I didn't see anyone else audition for Flaca, so I don't know exactly what they were looking for. But um, I was the first one there and I left. So I don't know. She sent the tape to, you know, Genji and that was it. She was like, and that was like the best thing that ever happened. I, it was a day, it was a day, and I was like, you know what? I could do this again. And then they kept calling me for it, and I'm like, I'm down. Which of Flaca's <laughs> storylines so far has just hit you the, the most? Her, her storyline? Well, you know, um, my favorite was her backstory, obviously. Um, you know, she was basically just being a hustler, lying, and um, it ended up being fraud and endangerment, you know? That was crazy. Um, <laughs> right? I was like, what? As it happens so I'm often. I'm in jail for this? Like, that's crazy. I didn't think that at all. So that was really interesting to find out. And, you know, her mom is not doing so good, um, you know, and she's still in love with that Ian dude. And funny story is that Jackie, me, also went on a date with him. <laughs> He's not very nice. <laughs> we have the same taste in men, you know. We like those emo boys. <laughs> uh, I was hoping Ian would be like, mm, you know. No, you're right. Who was? Mm. <laughs> If he's watching this, good. <laughs> How did you guys come up with her look? Because her look is badass. Well, you know, it's not me, but um, I helped pick out what I liked. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed with her, with her outfits. Um, she's, I guess, the teeny bopper, like, gothic chick that's Latina. I don't know. Like but, Depeche Mode? Like, yeah, Depeche yeah. Mode, The Smiths, like all these awesome bands that I listened to, but I wasn't as crazy as Flacca, but she's, she got me really into it. <laughs> and the teardrop was always part of her character, right? Well, I feel like um, she got that when she got in prison. We still don't know why it's there. I just feel like you got to be someone else when you're in there because we learned that she's like sensitive. She's not mean or anything so she puts on this like facade to be you know so people don't jump her you know but. who are you closest to on set of the actors diane diane danielle yael um taylor pretty much are my like top girls what is it like on set <sighs> we literally hang out and leah leah 
Uh, we literally hang out in the smallest room and we gossip and we eat and we like take selfies, I don't know. And <laughs> it's so much fun. It's literally like camp. <laughs> you get, and then you don't work with everyone all the time. So it's like a reunion almost. So it's fun to see each other on set. Like one is leaving and another group comes out. It's, it's so much fun. And we fight about the chips. Me and Danielle fight about the salt and vinegar chips because I like free things. So um, I take all the apples, bananas, and the chips in my bag. <laughs> and the tea. <laughs> I like tea. <laughs> I can afford it, but I like it when it's free. <laughs> okay, that is so flock of you. <laughs> I wouldn't say stealing. They give it to me, but I take extra. <laughs> Because you never know when you'll need some never chips. Know. There could be a chip emergency oh, happening. Oh, I, I took a few of yours in the bag. I, <laughs> the habanero, like corn nuts, my fave. I did see how excited you were when you saw them. You know what? I like spicy. <laughs> I'm pretty much a lot like Flecka. She's just way cooler than me. Where do you... Obviously, we know the show's coming back for season five. Where would and you want... six and seven. And season 12, probably. <laughs> Where do you want to see Flocka go? Do you want to see her ever get out of prison? No, please stay in prison. <laughs> um, I want her to have like a boyfriend, right? Like a proper boyfriend. Yeah, and I want her to sing. <laughs> Maybe because I want to sing. But it would be really cool if they invite the Smiths to set. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll die. <laughs> Dave gone. Mm. He lives in my neighborhood. Oh my God, can you call him? <laughs> well, I've never seen him. I'm told he lives in my neighborhood. All right, well, we got to talk But if about I ever him. see him, I'll be like, hey, Jackie, well, I mean, wanted me to... I'm Absolutely. Not a, I'm not a stalker. Or we could do, like, a musical episode, right? Almost everybody sings. That'd be fun. So what song would you want to sing? I'm, I don't... I would like to sing something, like, bluesy. I don't know what I would sing. Flocka would totally not sing the blues. I know, but I'm about? Jackie. <laughs> I know what I like. <laughs> I would sing something bluesy, but she would sing, like, uh, How Soon Is Now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to put any more music out as Jackie? Absolutely. Tomorrow, I got eight seconds. Tomorrow, I got a show. Uh, WPA, Ainsworth, Women's Prison Association, my band, The Family Portrait. We're singing tomorrow and a, a few covers. Some of the cast will be there, and I always ask them to come sing with me. Awesome. And now it's time for our audience. Yay. I love Q&A. Hey, Jackie. Thanks so much for being here. You're really inspiring. Thank you. Um, I know you can't give away any spoilers, but I was in Brooklyn a couple months ago, and outside of this Vietnamese restaurant, they put up a full-blown subway stop. It looked so legitimate, and it was completely fake for the show. What being, is there anything you could think of being on set that surprised you, just like the movie magic they made? Oh, yeah. A ton of stuff. Um, uh, but a lot of it seems very real because we um, film in um, upstate and it's like an abandoned children's psych ward where like it's haunted. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared to be in there. Yeah, just they have like it's like you, you uh, we were in there for 22 hours one, one for one episode and it's like midnight and it's still daylight outside and on set. So that's one thing where, like, you could see that it's not real lights, but it's like you feel like you're in this world, and when you come out, you're like, oh, my God, it's nighttime. So that's something that's really weird. Just they make it feel like day all the time. It's like Vegas, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Anyone else? Hey, Jackie. Uh, hey. Thanks for being here. Me and my sister are big fans of the show, so we already have plans this weekend to binge watch the new awesome. season. Uh, so uh, I know some of your cast members already are on Broadway. So is that something you want to do in the future? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, according uh, to her old boss, she already is on Broadway. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, this hasn't come out yet, but I believe they're writing a story for Cher, right? And um, I hope to be Cher one day on Broadway. <laughs> oh my God, that would I got to put it out there in the world. And then I won't get the part. You would be the best Cher I ever. want to. I've gotten ever. it my whole life. My whole life. So Cher is, has always inspired me. Her fashion, her music. She's a diva. I'm just like, I'm not a diva. Her opinions are so smart. Like, So I'm all about her. So that's, yeah, absolutely. And I heard they're doing like Mean Girls on Broadway. That could be kind of fun too. Hopefully I'll audition for that. Next question, please. 
Um, so I was wondering, um, the Floritza um, plotline kind of stopped in season three, and I was wondering, like the kiss happened in season two, and then it was like, I know, never, it was, like, it was never up? addressed ever. Um, and I was just like, I'm a huge fan, like friendship even as well. And I was just, I know you and Diane are very close. I was just wondering, um, the plot. Yeah, line. totally. That's my favorite uh, episode. Uh, no, my favorite scene. And she thinks that I'm like so in love with her or whatever, but she needs to get over it. Um, <laughs> I do love her, but not like that, whatever. Um, yeah, like I want more Floritza too, right? Um, we will see. There, there are definitely Floritza moments in season four, um, but I, I believe there should be more. All right, Denji? Come on. <laughs> and last question, please. Hey, your style game is on point today. Oh, thank um, you. I style myself. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Nicole Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to run the club game um, a couple years back in the city. And so you know what's up. I've seen all kinds of crazy things. What's one of the most bizarre things you've witnessed while working in the nightlife industry. Oh my God. I worked at Lavo, okay. People have yeah, spent wanna... $1 million on bottles. People have like paid us to just hang out with them. <laughs> okay, but they do have- At the club. They do have the best meatballs. They have the best meatballs. Like, they really do have great They meatballs. do, and I don't need two. One is good enough for me. No, like, just insanity. If you've ever been to the nightclub, it's kind of a lot of fun for someone who hasn't seen all that. We have amazing dancers. They come out in stilts. Like, it's crazy. And the, the, the sparklers. But um, this one night, this gentleman bought everybody Cristal. Like, uh, it was insane. All the girls come out in, in like, I don't know. It's insane. It's insane. If, if you want to party hard, <laughs> Now I'm doing a commercial for Lavo. Um, I do love them because um, the owner is one of my good friends, Noah. Noah. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. I've seen crazy. Just I've hung out at the club till 7 a.m. because they paid us to be there. And I'm like, cool. I'm getting new shoes. <laughs> and I when, have a shoe. And when does Orange come back? Come back? Yeah. Today. Today? 12 hours, June 17th. Uh, oh, oh, I got to do a commercial. Um, please watch Orange is a New Black on Netflix original series <laughs> in 12 hours. Stream the, whole, stream the whole season. Stream, stream, binge. I'm obsessed with binge watching myself. I have a problem. I have an addiction, and it's Netflix. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.